Alright, so we're going to be working through a dihybrid cross. And a dihybrid cross is one that we will look at two traits, that's the die, and cross those things that look different from one another or have different alleles. Okay, so we're going to start with the parental generation. And the parental generation is always true breeding and homozygous for whatever trait that we are considering. So in this case, let's look at, let's say, leaf shape and petal color. And let's say for leaf shape, we're going to consider leaves that are smooth or entire, and other plants which have leaves that are toothed. And through my magic genetic work, I know that smooth is going to be dominant to toothed. And I like to uh, give the dominant trait a capital letter to represent that dominance. So it'll be represented by a capital S and the recessive trait to get the lowercase letter. And then for petal color, let's see. Let's think purple for one of those petals. and blue for the other one. And again, through my magic lens, I have learned that purple is going to be dominant to blue. And so, I will assign a capital P and a little p. Alright, so our parents, as I mentioned, are true breeding, so they have to be homozygous for whatever trait we're talking about. Let's say that parent 1 is smooth leaves. And blue petaled, and parent two is toothed leaves with purple flowers. So we'll assign letters for their genotypes representing their alleles. Homozygous for smooth, so we have to have two big S's. Homozygous for blue, so we have to have two little P's because we're dealing with a diploid individual. And then the toothed parent will have two little S's and purple flowers, two big P's. All right, so we're gonna cross these two parents. And when we do that, we'll get the F1 generation, which represents the first filial generation. First, we're going to need to figure out what our gametes are going to look like for parent 1. And I like to do the FOIL method when I'm figuring this out. So outer, first outer, so big S, big P, or little P, sorry, big S, little P, big S, little P, and big S, little p. And yes, it's fairly, you probably already knew what all of the possible gametes were just by looking at it, but it will be a little more complicated in a moment. 
Okay, so let's go through another simpler, um, simple example here with the homozygous parent for twos and purple. And go through the same method. We have little s, big P as the possibility. Remember, we're going from a diploid having two alleles for the same trait and the parent to one allele for each trait in the gametes. And these gametes will combine to form a complete genome for the next individual. All right, so these are our four gametes that are possible for each parent. Remember at the end of meiosis, you have four daughter cells, and so these are the all possible for all of those daughter cells. Let's set up our Punnett square, and that's just a visual representation of this cross. On one side of your square, we'll put the sperm donor, and on the other side of your square, you will put the gametes from the egg donor. So let's put this parent here for the sperm donor, so its possibilities are big S, little p, all four possibilities on top. And the other parent is little s, big P, all the way down the side. And then I just like to draw my lines in, keep everything fairly organized here. And then go through and line up your rows with your columns and I always like to put my capital letter first and I like to put my letter types together. So big S, little s, big P, little p. And you probably realize by now that it's going to be the same all the way across. But I'm going to go ahead and fill it out for us just to drive home the point that from two parental true breeding individuals, those F1s will be heterozygous and they will all be identical to one another. And so if we were to go ahead and look at the genotypic and phenotypic ratio from this cross. The genotypic ratio are the allele combinations. And so every single time you're gonna have a big S, little s, big P, little p, so that's 100% or 1, 0. For the phenotypic ratio, that's what they look like. And they all have at least one big S, so they'll have the dominant character for leaf, which is a smooth leaf. And they all have a dominant allele for petal color, so they will all be, let's see where we were at there, they will all be purple for that dominant trait. Okay, so these are F1s, again 100% for that phenotypic ratio. Our next step is that we're going to cross two F1s. So anything from this square, we're going to 
going to cross it to another one. So an F1 cross with an F1 is going to get us that F2, which stands for second filial generation. So the genotypes that we're working with here, remember they all are S, I guess little S, big P, little P. We're going to cross that with another big S, little S, big P, little P to get those F2s. So first, let's figure out what our gametes are for this. So big S, little S, big P, little P. So what those possible gametes are, we have a big S with a big P. Big S with a little P. A little s with a big P and a little s with a little P. Okay, so that's parent one. What do you think? Is parent two going to look the same? It is, but I'm going to go through the process again just as our example. Big s, big P, big s, little P little s, big P, little s, little P. And so this is just a way to do all pairwise combinations visually. Let's set up our Punnett square with our sperm donor on one side and our egg donor on the other. So we have big s, little p, Little s, big P, little s, little P, and I did forget my big S, big P there. Then my other side, big S, big P, big S, little P, little s, big P, little s, little P. I'm going to draw in my line, help me stay organized. Let's combine those rows and columns. Give me my big letter first and my S's with my P's. Big S, big S, P, little P. I'm just going to read through all of them. Big S, little S, big P, big P. Big S, little S, big P, little P. You can try this on your side too. Big S, big S, big P, little P. Big S, big S, little P, little P. Big S, little S, big P, little P. Big S, little S, little P, little P. Big S, little S, big P, big P. Big S, little S, little P, little P. Little S, little S, big P, big P. Little S, little S, big P, little P. Big S, little S, big P, little P. Big S, little S, little P, little P. Two little P's, big P, little P, two little S's, and two little P's. We're done with our Punnett square. Now let's get together our genotypic ratio. Okay, so we've got, starting in the upper left-hand corner, Big S, big S, big P, big P, and I only see one of those. Next, we've got big S, big S, big P, little P, and I see one, two of those. Big S, little S, big P, big P, got one here. And one there, two. Big S, big S, and 
two little keys to one of those. Big X, little X, big P, little P. One, two, three, and four. Big X, little X, little P. One and two. Little X, little X, big P, big P. One. Little X, little X, big P, little P. One and two. Then our last one here. Two little X's, two little P's. There's one of those. And yes, this entire thing is your genotypic ratio. Now let's go figure out your phenotypic ratio. And I like to just list all of my pairwise combinations first. So we have smooth leaves with purple petals. We have smooth leaves with blue petals. We have toothed leaves with purple pe petals. And toothed leaves with blue petals. I also like to go ahead and list out the possible genotypes that would give me that particular phenotype. So for smooth purple, smooth is dominant. So I have to have one allele for dominant. The next one doesn't matter. It can be a big S or a little S. Either way, we'll get a smooth phenotype. For purple, it's the same. You only need, since it's a dominant phenotype, you only need one big P. And that next allele doesn't change the phenotype. For smooth and blue. Blue is recessive. The only way to get that trait is to have two recessive alleles. So little p, little p. Two is recessive. So the only way to get that is two little s's. Purple is dominant. So you need one big p. And the second allele doesn't matter. And then two and blue. Two little peas. Those petal colors. Okay, those are my possible genotypes that give me those particular phenotypes. Now I'm going to go back to my genotypic ratio and count the ones that um, give me each. Okay, so smooth purple, let's count. I need at least one big S and one big P. There's one. There's Two, so that's three plus two, five, that one doesn't give it, plus four, so that gets us nine. So that smooth purple genotypes. So that gives us that particular phenotype. All right. So now we're going to look at smooth and blue. We need one big S and two little P's. So here's one that does that, plus two. And it doesn't look like that any of the others will give us that phenotype. So we've got three ways to get that particular phenotype. Tooth and purple. We need two little s's and at least one big p. Let's see, two little s's, a big p, two little s's and a big p. So that's a total of three ways to get that phenotype. 
and then we're left with the last one there. Two little s's and two big two little p's, and there's only way one way to get that. So that is our phenotypic ratio, nine to three to three to one, out of a total of sixteen. Out of a total of sixteen possibilities.